The Korean Peninsula erupted into warfare on June the 25th, 1950. Communist North Korean forces rolled hundreds of tanks south against a lightly defended free society that wasn't free for long. Within weeks, the South Koreans were pushed almost into the Sea of Japan, and a scene of devastation and carnage was underway that even hardened military veterans try their best to forget. I spoke about it with Colonel Michael Sullivan at U.S. Army headquarters in South Korea. 54,000 American uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines uh, uh, died over here. Uh, millions of Koreans. I talk often to veterans of that conflict that come back here to see uh, what happened uh, since, uh, since the war, and their memories are of looking down on the buildings of Seoul. There was nothing left. U.S. forces hit Korea to support the South Koreans against their communist enemy to the north. It was all part of a concerted United Nations effort to try and keep free South Korea on the map. Now stop and think about these numbers. In three years, America lost nearly as many lives as in all of the Vietnam War. 58,000 Americans died in Vietnam during the period roughly 1959 to 1973, mm -hmm. and 54,000 Americans died over here between the summer of 1950 and the summer of 1953. Yeah. Uh, absolutely uh, brutal war. America's UN allies lost another 263,000 lives, including South Korean troops. And remember, those figures represent just three years and one month of warfare. That's just over three years of some of the most vicious fighting ever to take place in this century, fighting that took the lives of more than two million people before finally the wall was constructed that you see behind me, dividing North and South Korea. One American who fought during that campaign, in fact, fought right here on the front lines, was Ed McMahon. That's Captain Ed McMahon, a pilot who learned fast that this was a serious war. I got to Korea on a Monday. They showed me the front lines on a Tuesday, and Wednesday I flew my first mission right over the front lines in a small aircraft uh, directing artillery uh, flying. But the, the, by that time, the MLR, the main line of resistance, the MLR had pretty much stayed the same, right? All close to the 38th parallel. It had pretty much stayed like that. And what we used to see, we would see raw troops marching. They would march to the front lines. Ed learned what all American forces had discovered, that the communist enemy to the north was prepared to take heavy losses and fight this to the death. We would like throw a salvo right in front of them to let them know we had spotted them to let them at least disperse, you know, to get some protection. But they, they just march right to the, I mean, so f form, formal about it, they marched to the front line. They weren't creeping up or anything. They were walking along the highway in formation. The North Korean communists, supported by the Red Chinese, lost thousands of troops by fighting that way in formation. The world also saw, for the first time ever in the Korean War, a nightmarish new weapon used against the communists, jellied gasoline or napalm. The Americans frequently attacked a bridge in my village. One day, I was among a group of 30 peasants reconstructing this bridge. Suddenly, an aircraft appeared and dropped napalm bombs on us. Many houses were burned and the peasants on the reconstruction were all killed by the flames. I was the only survivor. When I opened my eyes, my whole body was on fire. But nothing stopped the communist onslaught, not even Nepal. Every inch of Korea became a fiery battleground. And America, led by General Douglas MacArthur, decided that air power might be the answer, since the communists had virtually no air force. Pilots like Ed McMahon made up the front line, and an airbase near the border was built at Osan. Not a lot has changed on the flight line here at the Osan Air Base in Korea. These are the hangars that housed the U.S. Sabre jets that formed the backbone of the American air presence during the war. The jets themselves fared pretty well during the three years of intense fighting that took place. But right outside this base, on the ground, it was a very different story. 
Task Force Smith, as the U.S. troop deployment was known, was just one of many Korean War battles that taught the American forces what it would be like to fight in a foreign nation's civil war against a well-armed communist force. At Osan Air Base today, Staff Sergeant Darlene Foote remembers the Korean War. She wasn't alive, but she's heard the stories from her father, a decorated, lifelong Marine. During one particular period when he was running, him and, and some of the other troops, I guess, people were falling down on the sides of him and he had to continue going. And he said that was really, you know, something to go through. And he even said, you know, after going through that, you know, he said, if I can make it through this, you know, that's, that's when he decided, you know, that he would go on and make the military career because he knew that, you know, this is the worst of it. This has to be the worst of it. So, you know, he just looked at that. It's only getting better from that point on. For Sergeant Foote, a military career meant a Cold War career because by the end of 1953, the killing was over. A truce was signed to take effect at 10 p.m. July the 27th of 53, and the fighting raged right to the last minute. Nothing was fired, no pistols, nothing was fired, about 9.30, 20 of 10. The Chinese and the North Koreans fired right up till 10 o'clock, then stopped, and two minutes later, they were walking through no man's land borrowing cigarettes and chocolates. 54,000 Americans dead, thousands of British, Australians, and Turks, and other UN forces, plus, of course, millions of Koreans. It was the seed for the world's longest Cold War standoff, one that now may only be getting worse. There has never been a formal peace treaty in Korea, only a shaky ceasefire, which continues there to this day. Now tomorrow you'll see why the two Koreas are still such bitter enemies and why the North would love to destroy the United States. Interesting, David, that you never think of the Korean War. When you think about the big wars, you hear talk of World War II, you hear right. talk of Vietnam, and how many people were lost in those particular wars, but not the numbers that you talked That's about. That's the main thing, people forgetting those, that, that body count, frankly, was so high there for the United States, for the allies of the United States, and of course for the uh, Koreans on both sides, as long, uh, along with the Chinese who fought with the North. Um, it, was a, it was an amazing amount of bloodshed for a three-year war, and again, because it only came five years after uh, World War II, it became overshadowed to a certain extent, but it remains a very tense piece of property there, and we're going to look at that the remainder of this week. Oh, good. Very interesting first part. Yeah. At least certainly looks like